arena and did not know what to do. Have you ever found yourself at a new job maybe and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed by this. Or maybe you, you decided I'm gonna stop being an employee, I'm gonna start being an entrepreneur and then as soon as you open up your business, like, okay, now what do I do next? Or how about this one? You got married and all of a sudden you went from being this person who's on your own and now you have a wife and you're like, I don't know how to be a husband or I don't know how to be a wife or, oh, how about this one? You get this really, you, you, you get, you're married, you got this new baby, and you don't know how to handle this new. <laughs> I remember when my kids were born, like, people say, well, let me hold the baby. Oh, and then I start, oh, I haven't done this in forever. Why you asking me to hold my baby? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you haven't done this. You going to act like you're going to drop him? <laughs> anyway, I got a little attitude about it. Give me my baby back, right? Um, and you get, this, you get this child, and now you're responsible for turning this person into a, an adult reasonable, responsible human being, and you don't know how to do it. Well, today, I'm going to talk to you about how to pray when you lose your way. Let's go. First Kings chapter, um, First Kings chapter 3, one of my favorite stories. I, I, I believe that this prayer has changed my life as much as or more than anything I've ever prayed. Um, because it speaks to, like, understanding how life works. So I'm going to read it to you first. We're going to start with verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1. And Solomon made an affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of the building of his house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in the high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only sacrifice burnt incense in the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was a great high place, and a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give thee. How many of y'all would like for God to wake you up? Hey, wake up. I got something for you, right? And says, I'm going to give you whatever you want. Have you ever thought about if that happened to you, what you'd ask for? Wow, right? Uh, well, if I can have three of these photos, two in green, four, two in blue, right? And we start ask, and we'd ask for all this stuff. Solomon didn't do that. You know why? Because Solomon understood the purpose of prayer. Most people mistakenly think that the purpose of prayer is to get God to do their will. But that's not the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is to get yourself in tune so you can do his will. To get myself in tune so I can do his will. So, so that's why, by the way, the, the prayer that people m mistakenly call the Lord's Prayer, because it's not the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. At least not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That is not the Lord's Prayer. How do I know? Well, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He didn't have any debts to forgive. Christ would have never prayed that prayer. But notice what he said in Matthew chapter 6 and I think Luke chapter 4 when he was teaching the disciples how to pray. He said, after this manner, therefore pray you. So it's not the Lord's prayer. It's the model prayer. It's the prayer model. This is, it's the pr prayer pattern, but it's not the Lord's prayer. Are y'all trying? The Lord's Prayer is in John chapter 17, where he said, I pray for them, for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all thine are mine, and mine are thine, and I am glorified in them. John 17 is the Lord's Prayer, okay? But Matthew 6 is the model prayer for us. Well, I want you to notice in the model prayer, it doesn't start with you, and it doesn't start with me, and it doesn't start with the stuff I want. The model prayer, he said, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are worthy. Holy is your name. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Revelation 4.11. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are or they exist, and that's why they were created. So everything was created to please God, which brings us back to Genesis chapter 1, and God said, and it was so, and God saw that it was good. You see, how, you see how it's full circle? The whole Bible keeps saying the same thing over and over, and God's saying it in different ways, trusting that eventually we will get it, right? Okay, so 
So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Watch what it says next. Thy kingdom come. The first thing you're supposed to ask for is the kingdom to come in your prayer. What does that mean? Dear Jesus, please come back today. That's not what that means. It's not what that means. The kingdom of God coming is not, the kingdom of God doesn't need to wait till Christ comes back to establish his earthly kingdom for his kingdom to come. His, the word kingdom is a compound word. It means it comes from a king and it comes from the word dominion. What is dominion? Dominion is when you have authority over and access to everything in your kingdom. It belongs to you. It's yours. Are y'all you, tracking? So when I'm praying for God's kingdom to come in my life, when I'm saying thy kingdom come, I am literally asking God to be the sovereign king of my life. When I'm asking God's kingdom to come, Lord, Lord, let my mind think the thoughts you want it to think. Let my eyes behold the things you want them to behold. Let my mouth speak the words you want them to speak. Let, 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 speak, want it to speak. let my hands do the deeds you want my hands to do, that you want my hands to do. Let my feet trod the paths that you want me to trod. When I'm asking for the kingdom of God to come, I'm asking for God to be the king of my life. That's really hard for Americans. You know why it's hard for us as Americans? Because we don't live in a kingdom. And we've never had a king. And so we don't know what a king, we don't know, we don't understand how a king operates. I remember I was, in, I was in London, I think it was the first time I was there with Bishop Wayne Malcolm back in 2000. It's hard for us as Americans because we don't live in a kingdom. And we've never had a king. And so we don't know what a king, we don't know, we don't understand how a king operates. I remember I was, in, I was in London, I think it was the first time I was there with Bishop Wayne Malcolm back in 2008. And um, he said to me, he said, um, Brother Myron, we used to have a much nicer building, but the queen took it. And that didn't make any sense to me. So I said, what you mean she took it? Then he said something that to me was crazier. He said, she needed it for something, so she took it. And I said, something, something. The queen needed your building for something. She took it, and you're okay with that. He literally backed up from me. <laughs> Looked at me like I was the crazy one. And then he said two words that I, or the next phrase, the next phrase he said, I'll never forget. He said, it doesn't matter. She's the queen. <laughs> then he said, you do know why the queen's picture is on all our money, don't you? I said, no, why? He said, because it's our money. <laughs> I said, I don't understand the kingdom of God. <laughs> because when you grow up in a kingdom, and you grow up under the authority of a kingdom, you understand that everyone and everything in the kingdom already belongs to the royal family. When I'm yielding my life to God, I'm not giving him something that's mine. I'm giving him something that's already his. I'm just doing my best not to steal it from him. So when I'm praying for God's kingdom to come into my life, I'm praying for God's way of doing things, God's kingdom culture to come into my life so that my life represents his kingdom more than it represents my whateverness. This is, this is, this is important. Okay, so ask what I shall give thee. What would you ask for? God come, I mean, the God of the universe who owns everything comes and asks you, I got a blank check up here with your name on it. I'm going to give you anything you want. What would you ask for? Here's what Solomon asked for. This is how to pray when you lose your way. When you find yourself in a situation and you don't know what to do, I believe that you can find guidance by praying this prayer. Here's what Solomon said. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed thy servant David, my father, great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart. Now, to me, that's one of the fu most fascinating statements in the Bible. Because I'm thinking to myself, okay, let me ask you all a question. Who was Solomon's mama? Bathsheba. Who was her first husband? Uriah. Who had him killed? David. And so I'm reading this, I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, which David are you talking about? I get it. He was a man after God's own heart. David blew it so bad that not only, Solomon was not confused and he wasn't stupid. 
he knew who his mama was. He knew who his daddy was. But he wasn't so focused on the mistakes they made and the sins that they committed. He was. He was. He didn't say that Solomon didn't do that. David didn't do anything bad. But he did recognize that even though he did some bad stuff, he also did some good stuff. And he honored his parents because that's what the scripture says to do. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So Solomon's doing that. Okay, so anyway, verse 7 again. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great people? Huh. That's a really interesting prayer. So let me, I'm going I'm to put it in modern day vernacular. I'm going to say it a couple of times. So Solomon is now the king. By the way, his brother Adonijah tried to steal the kingdom before David died. Y'all remember that, right? And Adonijah was older than Solomon. And so Adonijah pronounced himself to be the king. And I think it was in uh, 1 Kings chapter 1. Maybe it was in, yeah, I think it was in 1 Kings chapter 1. And he had Joab with him. He had, he had some of the people who were David's. And then Bathsheba, et cetera. Go read the story. I'm not going to give you the whole story. Anyway, Solomon doesn't know how to be a king. I don't know how to be a king. I don't know how to have, I don't have, know how to have a royal procession. Like, do you under, can you, like, how many times in our lives do we find ourselves right there? I don't know how, I'm supposed to do this thing. Clearly, I'm supposed to do this thing, but I don't know how to do it. This is how to pray when you lose your way. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to do the thing you put me on this earth to do in a way that pleases you and serves the people you put me here to serve. That's the whole thing right there. Change every, the prayer of Jabez, that's great. Great, great prayer. Ain't this prayer. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to do the thing you put me on this earth to do in a way that pleases you and serves the people you put me here to serve. What do I learn from that prayer? Two things. Well, I learned more than two things, but two things I learned, two, two mind-blowing things I learned is, one, God put me here to please him. I find that all throughout Scripture. We see it in Genesis chapter 1, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that it was good. Right? We see that in Revelation 4.11. For thou, hast, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, or they exist, and that's why they were created. I was created to please God. You were created to please God. You say, I don't even like God. Well, you'll please him too, because God hath made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. I mean, for the day of, even the wicked for the day of wrath. So God's made, even, even the, those of you who don't like God, you hate God, Congratulations. You're pleasing God whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. It is what it is. There is no escaping it. It is what it is. But when you recognize that that's why you're here and you yield to it instead of resisting it, you yield to it. And you say, dear Lord, give me the wisdom. Like, I, you made me a father. I don't know how to be a father. I didn't have, maybe, maybe you, you're a father and you didn't even have a father to be an example of a father. I don't know how to be a father. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the kind of father that pleases you and serves these children in a way you desire them to be served. You're a mother. Same thing. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the mother you put me here to be in a way that pleases you and serves these children you've given me to serve. You're a teacher. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the teacher you put me here to be in a way that pleases you and serves these students you've given me to serve. You're an entrepreneur. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the business owner you put me here to be in a way that pleases you and serves the clients you've given me to serve. You're, 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 you're a husband. Dear Lord, I don't know how to be a husband. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the husband you put me here to be in a way that pleases you and serves this wife you've given me to serve. You're a wife. You know, I don't know how to be a wife. Dear Lord, give me the wisdom to be the wife you put me here to be in a way that pleases you and, ser and, and serves the people you put, the husband you put me here to serve. Do you understand your purpose in life is wrapped up in pleasing God and serving people. Here's where we get messed up. Most Christians think that the purpose of their life is pleasing people and serving God. 
That's one of the biggest problems in modern-day churchianity. Too many people think that the purpose of their life is to please people and serve God. But the real purpose of your life is to please God and serve people. Do you understand? God is not going to bring someone across your path that you're not supposed to serve at some capacity if you don't serve them anything but a hello and a smile. I'm blown away by how many humans have the ability to walk past another person who's made in the image of God and not even acknowledge their God likeness by saying, hello, how are you today? Blows my mind. But I'm self-conscious. Right, that's the problem. You're self-conscious, which means you're not serving conscious. (laughs) 